You want to know what I did for my summer vacation? I learned to fly. We thought we had to clearly give people a Superman element. We had big movies to compete against, so we worked very hard on our visual effects and very hard on the flying. And you know, we used to laugh that it was grown people sitting around a meeting table speaking about how does Superman fly. You know. Well, green screen and all the special effects that took place. It was. It was a lot of work. Hanging from the wires and, and, and going through different harnesses, it was painful work. Something would happen with the way the harness was where the blood, the lower half of your body would stay in the lower half of your body and the blood in the top half of your body would stay in the top half of your body and somehow go right to the head. And I say to people, if you want to know what it's like, take a, a round stool, lay on top of it, and then flatten out and see how that is. You see how it strains your back and your stomach and your legs and everything. You have to balance at the same time. That'll give you a little bit of a sense of what it's like to be Superman. Dean was such a great sport and thank God he was athletic because if he hadn't have been in such good shape and so athletic, I don't know how anyone could have pulled this off. And just keeping him level so it looked like he was flying. It was always tough to try to get the angle right when he was like diving in on something, when he was landing or when he was taking off. If you ever looked outside of the frame, there were a half a dozen guys with wind machines and, and pulling on capes and broom handles and anything. It was, it, it was, it was kind of comedic. They would fly me out the window and they kept me flying. We had a number of mishaps, which were funny. You're in the hands of them, the people who know more about special effects and the emulsion, the visual trickery and the electronics and so on and so on than you do. So you, you have to trust them to tell the story. They did a good job and uh, I can't complain. And was it as good as it could have been, you decide. First time I was in the full suit was when I fly Lois through the opening windows at Daily Planet and it became, you know, one of our most f famous shots, carrying her in and, and bringing her down. I remember many times, probably including that time, having to have great leaps of faith to trust Dean to hold on to me. I mean, I was always independently wired, but he really did have to lift me and hold me in place a lot. It was a good thing he was a jock. And I was carrying her, and she was also on wires at the same time. A little tough. She didn't like being on the wires because it was painful. And, and sometimes there'd be some tears. I don't have kidneys anymore. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll never have children. No, I did. I had one. It was funny, though, with Terry Hatcher because she was complaining that she didn't like the harness, she didn't fit her, it didn't work. When we finally pulled her up there, um, she started screaming on the stage, Deborah, Deborah, Deborah. And I looked up and she went, I love it. I love it. I just remember that shot being so like that's when you stepped back and everybody just knew it. Everyone just knew right there it was going to work. Just what's better than that? One day I read the script and I thought, oh my God, am I going to get to do this? And they said, yes, you're going to get to fly. So they took me over to the Superman soundstage where they had the green screen set up. And then they said, okay, we're going to fly you. And they just took me out on this boom and they flew me back and forth across the green screen. And they had wind machines blowing and smoke machines. And oh my God, I felt, you know, like I was reborn. I wrote he is thinking and he walks up the wall and he hangs off the ceiling because I thought that would be interesting. I had no idea that 12 hours and hundreds of thousand dollars later that that special effect would be so difficult. The idea that he would stroll around his walls is, is terrific. That's Deborah. Our execution was great, but her notion is great. We used what, what's called a gimbal room where it's basically a giant room where they can turn it as we go. And roll. It was huge. They were building it and building it, and so the stage was gimbaled so it actually moved. But the camera is also mounted on one spot, and it'll go around, so it'll look like it's always on the floor. Your timing had to be right on with the people who are turning the gimbal. and You want it to look natural and put your foot up at the right time as the whole world is really changing. It was fun. It was really fun.
it was a small thing that I wrote, that he's laying there and he's thinking and suddenly he just starts to float up and up and up, just sort of lost in thought. He just floats up. Of course. That was on a teeter-totter. Where they would just raise me up and let me down. I was laying on a board at that time, but uh, they erased it digitally. We push kind of optical effects throughout the show. The X-ray vision and him, you know, being able to see through people did look great. I remember I, I shot this one episode which had a lot of X-ray vision in it, and um, getting this letter from someone saying the X-ray vision was so realistic, and and I was saying, did they have X-ray? How would they know? I think at the at the base of it all was a really good story, and if a director has a good story, they can go to town. I'm not impressed that this. 12 seconds is going to cost us $40,000. What I do is think of the audience always. The thing has to be as right as it can be for that audience. And as long as I keep my eye on the story ball, which is to say, what are we doing and who are those people and do they care for each other, that's good storytelling. It's a big, giant team, and everybody has to work together, and it's really a lot of fun, especially when you get it right.